What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D question mark video. We're, we're talking about both Regulation C and Regulation D. With NAIC going on right now, that means that we are about to wrap up the final Regulation C tournament, and then we're going to head into Reg D for Worlds, which I think is just... Man, comment down below what you think about Reg D being Worlds, or, or Worlds being Reg D rather, how like there's there's no tournaments leading up to it them to practice other than grassroots it's kind of insane anyways uh it, we're gonna talk about just five pokemon that were pretty decent in reg c that now you see barely any of in reg d due to uh various factors most of them being named urshifu uh but yeah before we get into that if you guys enjoyed leave a like subscribe turn notifications and uh let me know in the comment section down below uh, what you think about the uh pokemon that sort of fell off and if you think they can have any usage so Let's get into it. Number one, I, I, these are in no particular order, but the first one I want to talk about is Arcanine. Now, Arcanine had a pretty big niche in Reg C because if we actually just change this to Regulation C and we look at which Pokemon had Intimidate, um, or I guess, you know, if we just discount everything that's not legal because Shonen I won't do that, it was the viable Intimidators were basically Arcanine, Gyarados, and that was more or less it. You can make an argument for Salamence, but it fell off in Regulation B, and now in Reg C, you see mostly Arcanine. And Arcanine did have a lot of positive matchups into what was popular. Uh, taking a look at Picolytics, we can see that Arcanine with like safety goggles just immediately disqualifies Amoongus from playing the game. It resists the fairy moves from Fluttermane, so being able to just one-shot a lot of those with a Flare Blitz, as well as tanking whatever hit you need to on that front was great. Burning or just intimidating Ting Lu is awesome. Resisting the Fire Stab off of Chi Yu is great. Chan Pao just hates facing Arcanine because it intimidates it uh, and it's able to one-shot it back. Dragonite, it just doesn't want to get burned, but uh, because most of them ran inner focus, he didn't really mind them too much. And yeah, it was basically like all of the top Pokemon had to deal with Arcanine in some way, shape, or form for them to perform at their, uh, their you know, maximum potential. But yeah, Arcanine was great because of its great bulk, its access to Intimidate, uh, Will-O-Wisp, Extreme Speed for just like, you know, having a priority move. Flare Blitz, uh, and usually you would run like Protect and this sort of thing, but there were even some Arcanines that were running like Howl, which I found to be very powerful. And yeah, Safety Goggles was a great item, so was the Citrus Fairy. It was just a good Pokemon uh, all around. However, now in Regulation D, if we take a look uh, at all like the Fire Types and Intimidators, uh, those are the two things keeping Arcanine from being great. The number one thing I think it's actually competing with, funny enough, is actually going to be just a Fire Type slot on the team. You have to be really careful in this format because of you know, the existence of Landorus and Urshifu Rapid Strike, uh, what fire type you end up going with. And, you know, you can't really afford to run two on a team for the most part. Heatran is its main competition, though. In more situations, you're going to find Heatran to be useful than Arcanine, since Arcanine is sort of carried by its ability, right? Heatran is also kind of carried by its ability, but it also has access to, like, really, really good bulk, better bulk than Arcanine. 106 defense, 106 special defense, 91 HP compared to the 80, 80, 90 that Arcanine has. Higher special attack, meaning it isn't really uh, discouraged by the existence of Intimidate. Um, you know, it doesn't have to, like, Arcanine has to use, like, its physical attack for max potential. Each rank can use special attack, doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, also just comboing Flash Fire with Terra Grass has made this a really difficult Pokemon for people to deal with. Uh, being a you know, fire and steel type means that you're super weak to ground moves and water moves, but by turning into a grass type, you do with both of those and you get the immunity to fire moves from your ability flash fire. So it's just a much more solid fire type option, in my opinion. If we look at like usage stats, we can see that Heatran tends to take up the fire type slot if it's not taken up by like Chi Yu at the moment. Um, yeah, it's basically 50 50 on Heatran or Chi Yu. Sometimes you'll see like an armor rouge or some weird pick, but. Uh, for the most part, that's not like super, super common. We can even see in the wide league, it's Chi Yu. There is one Hisuian Arcanine, but that is another, you know, non-regular Arcanine that um, is seeing usage. And yeah, and it's just mostly just Chi Yu or Heatran. So there are two really good fire types in the format that it really has to struggle with. So it's no longer able to perform. Also, Intimidate isn't as useful when, you know, Urshfu just doesn't care. So yeah. Next up is Great Tusk. Once again, an Urshifu-shaped problem. It is not only weak to Urshifu, capable of getting one-shotted by uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike, but also it is competing for a fighting-type slot on the team. Great Tusk was serviceable when Sun teams were super, super powerful because you could just run like Jolly Scarf Great Tusk, not really care, one-shot like everything in the metagame uh, with your combination of Headlong Rush, Rock Slide, um, 
close combat and whatever final move you want to run. Ice Spinner is pretty good. Uh, and yeah, and Choice Scarf. With like Protosynthesis in the sun and just that speed boost from the scarf and just being able to hit everything super, super hard, uh, it was very, very difficult to switch in on. However, with the new tools in Reg C, we can see that a lot of teams can deal with it pretty effectively. Having Rillaboom around is definitely not very good for it. Uh, Rillaboom's going to be able to not only fake it out, but also probably one-shot it with a Wood Hammer, or at the very least, slow it down with Grassy Terrain boosted um, Drum Beating. And Grassy Terrain's a whole nother issue for this thing. Grassy Terrain will decrease the power of specifically Bulldoze, Magnitude, and Earthquake. The only one really mattering being Earthquake, though. A lot of people say, oh, it lowers all ground move power. It's not. It's just those moves. Uh, so yeah, the passive recovery that it gains, plus the fact that it's just a hard check for um, for Scarf variants of Great Tusk, which is like the best set, uh, is very difficult for it to deal with. So yeah, it, it's not going to have a fun time. Urshu, like I said, also deals with it. And the format has just become very hostile to it. Along with that, we do have better ground types in the metagame. We have the existence of Lander Astherian, which is just a super powerful ground type uh, that not only beats most variants, non like Ice Spinner variants of Great Tusk, but also is able to do a lot of what they want to do better. Stomping Tantrum, Terra Blast, uh, Terra Flying, U-Turn, Rock Slide, that sort of thing. Uh, also, it's an Intimidator, so it's got that going for it. Next up, these two Pokemon were both invalidated by the same uh, common offender, uh, Urshu Rapid Strike. If you notice a trend, it's mainly Urshifu that has done a lot of this. Um, Palafin and Gyarados are physical water types. In Reg C, Palafin started off as the dominant water type and sort of fell off. You still see some usage in Reg C though. Then Gyarados arose on New Balance teams because of its ability to uh, run like items like the safety goggles to shut down like Amoongus with Taunt. Uh, it also loved to run speed control in the form of Thunder Wave. It could combo that speed control with a very good chance to flinch or paralyze with a uh, Waterfall. And like the final move would just be like taunt or or would just be like protect or something. And it was like a really solid Pokemon. Uh, on the other side of things, Palafin Hero was just like, you know, I, I, where Gyarados is at peace with its water type and uh, it's, it's a lack of coverage and its ability to use uh, status moves to its advantage. Uh, Palafin was just like, F it, we wave crash, F it, we wave crash, F it, we jet punch, question mark. Yeah, it was able to do like everything it needed to with those moves. Ex like... It, it didn't need to do anything else. You'd run like wave, you would run a uh, wave crash, protect, jet punch, and like haze. And that would be all you need. You would run mystic water and it would just one shot a lot of things, right? It fell off because it didn't have as much like, you know, utility as Gyarados. But now both of them have fallen off because they're competing with, not Ursaluna, Urshifu Rapid Strike. And also technically Basket Legion, but it's mostly Urshifu Rapid Strike here that has been the uh, issue with it. So... Why would you run these two guys, these two chumps that care about Intimidate and, you know, care about Focus Sashes and and care about Reflect when you could just crit through all of that and still have, you know, priority moves to deal with faster Pokemon, comfortably run Protect, and also, you know, have access to a Pivoting move and stab Close Combat to deal with Grass types. Um, yeah, it's it's... It's night and day. Like, yes, these two are bulky and they have more utility to them. Yes, they can survive a special attack. But, I mean, when you crit every turn and you don't care about protect, the value speaks for itself. It's, it's like, super difficult to even compete with this Pokemon. It is, like, the greatest Pokemon in the format. If we look at, like, the top performing teams, Urshifu, 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 no Urshifu, no Urshifu, Urshifu, no Urshifu, Urshifu, no Urshifu, no Urshifu, Urshifu. <laughs> Like, it is it is the Pokemon to beat, specifically the Rapid Strike variant, because of how well it does into everything in the metagame. I've made a video about this. We have a video just explaining why Urshifu is, like, the best Pokemon in the format. But yeah, if we look at the Wide League, no Urshifu in first place, Urshifu in second place. What, is this going to be, this going to be Dark type, right? Yes, it is the Dark variant. I was going to say, like, even the Dark variant's, like, super good. Uh, because of its ability to just hit things with Wicked Blow and one-shot everything with a Choice Band set. But yeah, um, these guys can no longer compete because they're physical attacking water types. Yes, we do see the occasional Gyarados. I actually think we might see one in here. We do see a Palafin. You know, there's there's a couple of Palafin, but um, did they run double water or is that dark? Okay, it is dark. Yeah, but uh, as far as like usage, like both of these Pokemon really, really struggle in the current format and it's just extremely difficult for them to find a usage over Urshifu and the entire thing is just much more hostile to them, especially since like water types had it they were eating good. They had it so good in Reg C. There were no electric types. Now, in Regulation D, like, 
you know, Thunderous exists, Regieleki exists, Iron Hands is still around. Uh, it, there's just, it's a much more brutal format for water types, and Urshifu Rabbit Strike is one of the few that can deal with it. Speaking of grass types, just kidding. I, I like, was gonna say grass types with like Rillaboom existing and saying like, oh yeah, that's that's super hostile for them, but no. Uh, Obama Snow is a grass type and an ice type. And it was actually pretty decent in Reg C. You would pair it with, um, here, 5% usage. That's nothing, that's nothing to scoff at. That's pretty good. Uh, you would pair it with an Iron Bundle and then just go all in on Blizzard spam, run Aurora Veil. You would run Terra Water like a ton of the time and just hit things with Terra Blast that would threaten both of you. It was a good Pokemon on Hyper Offense teams. So, you know, what happened? Well, I'm, don't get mad. I'm going to say it again. Urshifu kind of happened. Uh, you don't really care about screens as much in this format. It doesn't net you as much value. Uh, but also, just we have access to Heatran, which sort of just absolutely stomps on that combination of Pokemon. It makes it very difficult for them to get going what they need to get going. You're relying on landing a Hydro Pump at that point. Um, it's one of the few Pokemon that times four resists ice. It's going to be able to like hit you on the special side of things, which neither of them want to get hit on the special side of things. Urshifu just crits through all those things. Uh, speed control got a lot better. Uh, for hyper offense teams to deal with opposing hyper offense iron bundle teams because now they're able to use Pokemon like Tornadus to their advantage and then just like, you know, Hailwind up, use a Choice Scarf Urshu Rapid Strike and one shot the iron bundle before it can do anything. It's become a lot more difficult to utilize this hail or snow hyper offense variant to deal with things because before you could just like helping hand Terra Ice um, Blizzard into everything and it just one shot a lot of the frailer things in Reg C. If we look at like the most common Pokemon in Reg C, Flutterman got one shot, Amoongus got one shot, Ting Lu, I think with the AV, just barely lived the super effective Terra Ice Helping Hand Blizzard. Chi Yu probably doesn't live, um, even though it's resisted. Like it's actually it probably does. I don't know. Chen Pao didn't enjoy taking it. Uh, Dragonite didn't like it. Even Opposing Iron Bundle didn't like it. Freeze Drive for like Palafin. Everything was just super susceptible to ice moves for the most part. And now that we have, you know, better Pokemon, we have like access to uh, you know, Heatran, we have access to, we still have access to Bax, but it's mostly like Urshu Rapid Strike can just like tank the hit. Uh, it's, it's much more difficult for those teams to get going. So with that, Obama Snow's like small niche has effectively been annihilated. And when, when Ninetales comes back to the game, because Ninetales is confirmed for the DLC now, um, Alola Ninetales is just gonna make it so you, there's no reason to use Obama Snow. So he's gonna have the hardest fall, even if it wasn't that high of a, that, if it wasn't that high of a high, you know, he's he's more or less just gonna like twist his twist his ankle on the way down when he falls. So yeah. Uh that's the five Pokemon I think fell off the most in Reg C. This is a quick little video. Or from Reg C, but this is a quick little video. Um let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Just a little opinion piece. And yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.